Yo, what's up people, my name is Tanachi and I'm back here in the world of Satisfactory. Alrighty, hope you're keeping really well. Okay, so update 6 is going to be with us around June and they've given us a good idea of what's going to change in this area. It does look very nice indeed and uh, so I'm kind of glad I got rid of my starter factory up there. From what I could tell, it looks like there's going to be some huge arch with like a huge waterfall uh, somewhere in this, or well, somewhere there anyway. I'm not exactly sure where. I might have got it wrong, I'm not 100%. And I'm looking forward to building something in this new area once it's done. Uh, it looks pretty lush. I was slightly disappointed, just slightly, uh, that there's not going to be any new recipes and new machines. Don't get me wrong, I understand. They've got their priorities and, and they've got to do what's right for them. And what they're doing looks really good as well. So just a small part of me, I think, would have liked to have a few more machines and recipes to kind of play around with. But anyway, so that won't happen in the next update. And um, I've got one very old factory uh, there. This is done a long time ago. And it's kind of right on the on the edge of the valley area where the canyon starts. I couldn't really tell from the video if this area here is gonna change, but it is a really old factory done in, in update three, so like one and a half years ago, two years ago. It's probably time that I got rid of it and uh, built something different, built something new. I did update it a little bit with new textures with a bit of concrete and asphalt, but I definitely need it because it's doing plastic and rubber that goes to Eden. I know the oil nodes over there are gonna change, but there's three or four uh, oil nodes right there as you can see and I'm not sure if they're going to move as well or but it didn't really give a good shot of this particular area here so uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen here but I'll probably leave it until until the update comes out and then uh, see whether I'll need to do it again or not I am slowly getting rid of the old builds anyway and updating them so I'll probably get around to it eventually anyway but um, you know I'll probably leave that for now but anyway uh, enough of that rubbish so started working on a new project uh, i'm going to do something really small here nothing too big um because i'm kind of thinking right a bit like my frames per second in this game i'm kind of slowing down a little bit because i really am running out of space and nodes to work with and uh i'm trying to spread everything out and keep it all separate and keep things in different areas and um for performance reasons as well and also i like to change the scenery and to try different areas and stuff like that but anyway so i'm gonna start a new little project but really small nothing too big so i've been working on this uh that whatever, yeah and when i was doing x3 i had these things on the side were like runners they're like kind of huge runner and chains it's like mechanical in nature so what i thought is um i'm gonna do a build and try and expand that chain idea and so that's really what that is i guess the idea is are you complaining what are you complaining about my friend look i understand your programming does not allow you to distinguish god mode i understand that but surely you understand this uh what was i saying yeah something about the chains yeah, that's it so with x3 i like the chain idea so i thought i'd try and do something more with chains um it doesn't really make sense as a problem though because um what i was thinking is what exactly are those chains doing because there's too much slack in them so they're not holding the roof down and i've put it so it's like being bolted down to the ground but then why would you do that it could be that maybe um, they're keeping the roof on if the pressure gets too high what happened the, the top will go flying off but the chains will keep it down i took such a load of bollocks maybe it's a huge microwave and uh, a huge popcorn comes out the size of trucks and the chains like let go and the top goes flying off and then you can uh... anyway it's really unrealistic basically is what i'm trying to say there's absolutely no functional practical use for having these odd looking chains coming down from the top um, but i've done that anyway so you might have noticed that there's um doors opening by themselves as you can see we've got a door opening just there in front of us and then in any second now this door here should open there we go so um i thought i'd try to do something where i could try animate the factory just a little bit to bring it a little bit to life so what i've done is um basically put a factory cart going around in a circle and every time the factory cart goes next to one of these doors um which you'll see which you there you go so every time the factory cart goes next to the door it will uh, of course make the door open and I'll put a, a a billboard right behind it so um, every now and then the those doors will open for a few seconds and show this uh, red light don't ask me just don't ask me I don't know I haven't got all the answers just wanted to try and animate the factory a little bit and uh, just try something different I had a really cool idea which I might try later with the again with the same principle having like uh, trucks uh, kind of like 
activating a door to open a door and then using LCD, using billboards to get different lighting effects that kind of correspond with different production. But bloody hell, is it so difficult to do? Well, because when you start using trucks, you've got to get the right amount of fuel in. Otherwise, they'll keep going around even when the machines are off and they won't kind of coincide with what's happening. But like most of these ideas, they're more trouble than they're worth most of the time. I use a factory car because it doesn't require any fuel. So it can just keep going round and round all the time. I guess it could be like the, the furnace is letting off steam, letting off a bit of heat. As I said, it's just for a little bit of animation for the factory. I think the idea could be expanded on, maybe, if you're kind of willing to don't waste time with that kind of stuff. Alrighty, so I've done a little bit more work here because uh, I wanted to get the Caterium and Copper. So I've connected a couple Copper nodes and in a the distance there, we've got some Caterium coming and they're all kind of joining on the side here as you can see so to try and make this like a proper foundry we're doing all the metal so it's doing steel iron caterium copper and a tiny bit of um limestone as well because there's a, a limestone deposit just there so a little bit of concrete and um, i haven't done anything on the inside really i've kind of just put machines anywhere i haven't really decorated the inside but anyway on the back here i've got the coal the caterium copper and uh the iron coming in here and they all go inside there i'm using that that merger technique that i kind of showed in the last video and just for now temporarily i've got all the items just coming out and going into sinks that's temporary of course so i'm going to delete all that and i'll probably end up putting a train station here uh, 150 roughly concrete around 260 caterium uh, 780 iron 1200 copper and 1200 uh, steel ingots kind of doing all the metals and a tiny bit of concrete and on the inside like i said i haven't really done anything on the inside no decorations at the moment i've left it kind of empty and i just put machines anywhere and downstairs we have um uh, we have the constructors doing the concrete i'm using the iron recipe uh, the what's it called the solid steel iron recipe so we've got a lot of uh, smelters doing iron uh, roughly well, not roughly, exactly 42. Is it 40? Yeah, 42, I think, or 48 um, constructors doing iron ingots, the solid steel recipe for steel. And uh, these ones are doing the copper and also some more over here as well. It's an odd shaped building, so that's why it's got like these kind of like odd uh, little, um, little areas like that. And upstairs, we're doing the caterium, as you can see. And now we're right at the top. But anyway, so it's very simple inside, nothing fancy. And once I have a, a bit more of an idea of what I'm doing with this and the whole project, I'm going to do something here in this centre area. And I need to think of a name, as, as I said. Uh, I was thinking just to call it the Chain Foundry, because I really am running out of names. Um, so I'm not too sure what to call it. Uh, so I'll probably call it the Chain Foundry. And what do you think, my friend? Chain Foundry sound good to you? You're just happy flying around, aren't you? You just fly around for the rest of eternity. You'll be flying around until like, update 10 comes out. DLCs will come out. Satisfactory 2 will be out. The end of the world. You'll just be going round and round. Minding your own business. Taking dumps on trees. Yeah. The life of a bird. Nice and simple. Um, what was I saying anyway? So I've got a few ideas in mind for the next kind of part. And I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. If you've been following me, you might know that I've got uh, Eden and Area 51, and they're kind of customizable to some degree. And I can kind of change what they're producing a little bit. So once further updates come out and they give us tier nine and 10, whatever they're gonna introduce. So what I'm trying to do is prepare a rough selection of different resources across the map. And Infinity Works is doing those uh, silly assembly director systems, whatever they're called. Sorry, that's Atom Industries doing the assembly director systems. And Infinity Works is doing cooling systems and um, another one, infused modular frames. And together with Eden and Area 51 with this one. This is pretty much the main production unit, which is quite configurable to produce anything from, from the top tier items. I've got, kind of got a good selection of items to use for future projects. And I've kind of got all my different locations set up to send a drone to that floating alien structure in front, which I've done a video a long time ago. And from there, I can either send them on or maybe make a storage inside there as well, a remotely accessible storage, or produce something inside there as well. It really depends on what they're going to do. With future updates but on this project um, what i'm thinking is with new items that they're going to release possibly it's likely that you're going to need a fair amount of mid-tier items like um, circuit boards and uh, fr modular frames and um, rotors motors stators all that kind of stuff so what i'm thinking is i'm going to do well with this factory here some kind of mild configuration where it allow me to 
kind of set up production, keeping in mind future projects so it can kind of supply those as well. If I find out that in the next update I'm going to need loads of, for example, AI limiters, I'll have the, that factory this, on this new project I'm going to do producing loads of AI limiters and maybe state as well, whatever. So that's what I'm kind of aiming for here. So I'm not really doing anything high end like with um, the high tier eight items underneath that this mammoth really odd looking build and i was thinking to like a build right underneath and you've kind of got this mega factory as a canopy but then i was kind of put off by an atlantis and i don't mean like stargate atlantis but i mean like traditional style atlantis because it's got loads of water and waterfalls so i was thinking to do a build like that underneath there uh the canopy above this mega factory kind of like deters me and, and it's a bit laggy here as well because of this factory so but anyway that's one possibility the second idea i had was just to build a normal factory for a change instead of trying to build in odd areas and odd locations i was thinking maybe just build a, a nice normal factory and, and do something traditional in this big open area here in the grass fields and so that's kind of like the second idea i've got uh, i'm also going to need some plastic as well but i'm going to bring plastic on that train track coming from eden to do this as well so with the the metals a little bit of concrete and a little bit of plastic about 200 plastic that should be enough for what i've seen to do a good selection of mid-tier items um, not much of course but um something and the third idea i had was um somewhere off the cliff here you know I me mean, i like to experiment i've always got weird ideas i like to like kind of mess around with different ideas so i was looking at somewhere around there but it's really impractical and i'm not sure about that one and the fourth idea i had and probably my favorite so far is this area here i rarely ever see anyone do builds in this area and for good reason because there's hardly any resources here and secondly it's a uh, uneven and difficult terrain to work with it's for good reason why not many people build here in fact i don't think i've ever seen any builds in this area no i'm not sure i can't remember anyway i was thinking to build something around here i think it could be quite nice there's a lot of nice little like, odd areas like underneath those arches underneath that arch there or maybe going across a river and so it's got possibilities and the last idea i had was to go over there to that I'm not sure what the area is called, the Blue Crater, whatever it's called anyway. It's just a little bit dark and depressing, this area. Although I was saying that the lighting inside would make it look kind of cool. But yeah, anyway, so that's the kind of like the last idea. So over here in the West with the, is that the Gold Coast again, whatever it's called anyway. I have had a few comments about this cave here and it's, it's just a brilliant location. It's definitely something that's been on my mind for a while uh, to build here because this is bloody awesome. But I was thinking to save this area and to kind of do something else in the future maybe with it when on a further update or maybe even 1.0 or something like that anyway i'm not sure but it's a absolutely brilliant brilliant area really nice yeah look at that that's brilliant and it's got an opening at the top there as well and it's got uh, i think it's got another entrance on the side or somewhere it's got like two or three entrances yeah sit down there another exit over here yeah so that's really good so it's a brilliant location basically and I think there's another entrance as well. And it's definitely something I've had in mind for a while, but um, it's a big area and I would like to do something quite nice with it, maybe at some later point in time. So maybe that's something for later on as well. And the good thing about this area is it's got really good access to the, the oil nodes that are there and also easy access to bauxite as well. And it'll be pretty easy to bring in all the, the basic metals. If anyone's done a factory or some kind of like, uh, or anything inside this cave, I'd love to see it. Don't be shy, uh, send me a picture or even your save game file. I wouldn't mind getting some ideas as well, to be honest. If I saw your save or your a picture, I can copy, I mean, get some inspiration from it, I mean. Yes, yes, I played a game recently. I did a video, my last video was on the game called The Stanley Parable. Uh, Ultra Deluxe Edition, no, just Ultra Deluxe, yes, it's Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. And my gosh, what a, a mind trip that game was, bloody hell. But I absolutely loved it, and uh, I don't know if any of you guys know about the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. I'm kind of late to the whole thing, because I didn't. I don't play those kind of games usually. And uh, I did a video on it, just a short video, it was only like three hours long, so it's nothing too long. If you watch my videos, you know that I can talk, I can talk a lot. But in that whole video, I was so dumbfounded. Basically, it's three hours of me just going, uh... Oh, what the heck? What? I don't, just, what? I don't get it. What's happening? It's, what? The video is three hours of me basically doing that. The narrator in that game, he talks so bloody much. My gosh. I thought I could talk a lot, but that guy doesn't stop talking. But yeah, anyway, it was an interesting game and um, a kind of psychedelic mind trip and uh, really immersive. It's got a great philosophical meaning. It's got a lot of philosophical insights. I really liked it. But anyway, guys, I'm going to keep this video short. Uh, first part is done and we'll see where we go from there. Alright guys, hope you've enjoyed. Thank you for watching and maybe I'll catch you again soon.